Here is a very cool question, which is frequently used to test your math skills. You need to determine how much interest should be paid. Sheila borrows $36,000 to purchase a vehicle at the rate of 6% and repays by making fixed payments monthly in the amount of $845.46. At the end of four years, how much interest Sheila will end up paying along with the principal amount. You have four different choices. Choice A, $2,160. Choice B, $4,320. Choice C, $4,582.13. And choice D, $5,082.17. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. Maybe pause this video to see if you can calculate the answer. Did you figure it out? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's first look at the facts. Principal amount borrowed here is $36,000. Time to repay is 4 years, which equals 48 months, which means that number of payments is equal to 48. Monthly payment amount is $845.46. Based on this information, let's look at how can we solve this challenge. And the first step is to calculate the total repayment amount, which would include principal and interest. And we will do it by multiplying fixed monthly payment by the number of payments. 845.46 multiplied by 48 equals $40,582.13. Because we know the principal amount, which is $36,000, we can calculate total interest paid by subtracting $36,000, which is principal, from the total repayment amount which means that $40,582.13 minus $36,000 equals $4,582.13, which is total interest to be repaid. So the correct choice here is answer C, $4,582.13. Do you know the better way to solve it? Please make sure you post your solution by sharing it in comments. Here is an amazing question which tests your imagination and spatial thinking. You need to determine how many triangles are shown in this figure. Take a close look and select one out of four different choices. Choice A, 7. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 12. And choice D, 17. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and use as much of your imagination as possible. Maybe pause this video and give yourself 20 to 30 seconds to determine the answer. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution to you. At least the solution I found. And obviously, if you have a different solution, please make sure to share in comments. Couldn't believe it, but I counted 12 triangles here on the picture. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Did you count a different number? Please make sure to share in comments. And also please share how easy was it for you to solve it. I'd like to share with you a very interesting question where you need to determine the letter of the alphabet. You're presented with 26 letters of English alphabet and you need to determine which letter in this alphabet is the seventh letter to the right of the letter which is tenth letter to the left of the one before last letter of the alphabet? You have four different choices. Choice A, letter X. Choice B, letter W. Choice C, letter V. And choice D, letter O. Can you determine the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time Maybe pause this video for 10 to 15 seconds to see if you can come up with the solution.
Ready or not, let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As you might be well aware, in English alphabet, there are 26 letters. And the letter one before last is letter Y. Tenth letter to the left of the letter Y would be letter O. Let me demonstrate it to you. If I am currently at the letter Y, let's count 10 letters to the left of the letter Y. It would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. You see, I ended up on the letter O. Now we need to determine seventh letter to the right of the letter O. Let's do the math. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. As you can see, this is the letter V. So the correct choice here is choice C, letter V. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question you might easily get on the test. John's monthly spending is $1,500. 40% of his spending goes toward utilities and the amount that he spends on heating and electricity is 15% more than what he spends on utilities. How much does John spend on things besides heating, electricity, and utilities? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, $210. Choice B, $220. Choice C, $230. And Choice D, $240. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can calculate the solution. The correct answer here is choice A, $210. Do you know how to get to this answer? If you figured it out, please make sure to post your answer in the comment section of this video. Thanks for participating and good luck! Here is one of my favorite questions, which validates if you can think out of the box. You are presented with the rectangle, which contains three rows. First row has numbers 2, 8, 4, and 5. Second row has numbers 6, 2, 9, and 3. And the last, third row has numbers 9, 7, 4, and then the fourth number is missing. Can you calculate it? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, 7. Choice B, 8. Choice C, 9. And then choice D, 12. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can do the calculations. Maybe pause this video to see if you can come up to the solution. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As usual, my advice to you, look for patterns. Let's first check the patterns in the rows. Let's sum up the values in the row. 2 plus 8 plus 4 plus 5 equals 19. Second row, 6 plus 2 plus 9 plus 3 equals 20. Looks like there is no pattern. I don't see any pattern, do you? Let's check the columns. The first column has values 2 plus 6 plus 9. Some of those equals 17. Let's look at the second column. 8 plus 2 plus 7 also equals 17. I think we're getting somewhere. And then the third column is 4 plus 9 plus 4 also equals 17. Based on this information, we can calculate the missing value. 5 plus 3 plus question mark would be equal 5 plus 3 plus 9 also equals to 17. So the correct choice here is choice C, 9. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know what to look for and the similar problems on the test. Here is the question for you to see how well you would do on the real test. You are presented with four triangles. Each triangle is of a different color and has numbers in the corners. You need to calculate the missing number. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Give yourself a little bit of time and when you're ready with the answer, make sure to post it in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck! One of my favorite problems is where you need to determine next number in the sequence. In our case, we are presented with three numbers and you need to determine number 4 which is missing. The numbers you see are 33, 55 
77 and you need to determine the next number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 97. Choice B, 99. Choice C, 105. And choice D, 107. Do you see the answer? In this particular case, answer requires you detecting the pattern. And the pattern here is that we need to start with the odd number 3 and multiply 3 as well as the next odd number by 11. So the calculations for the numbers we see on the screen would be 3 multiplied by 11 equals 33. Next number would be 5 multiplied by 11, which would be equal 55. And then the last visible number would be 7 multiplied by 11, which would be 77. This makes it easy to calculate the missing number in the sequence, which would be 9 multiplied by 11, which would equal 99. So the correct choice here is choice B, 99. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer this and similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting question where you present it with the very unusual shape and you need to count how many squares are shown on this picture. You have four different choices. Choice A, 8. Choice B, 12. Choice C, 15. Choice D, 18. I'm gonna give you a quick hint. Please take a close look and you will see that some squares are inside of the other larger squares. Let me share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you count a different number, please make sure to share in comments. Believe it or not, but I counted 15 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Did you count a different number? Do you have a better way to solve it? Do you have a system to solve these types of questions? Please make sure to share your thoughts and ideas in comments. A lot of people ask how can I help on this channel? One of the best ways to help is to help other people answer the questions that they're getting. If you know the answer to the question you see in comments, please post the answer in the comment section of this video. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting question where answer might be very surprising to you. You need to determine the day of the week. If January 1st, 1996 was Monday, what day of the week was January 1st, 1997? And obviously, you need to determine it without looking at the calendar. There are four possible answers to this question. Choice A, Thursday. Choice B, Friday. Choice C, Wednesday. And choice D, Sunday. Do you know what the answer might be? Believe it or not, the answer can be calculated doing mental math. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can come up with the solution. Regardless if you are ready or not, I am going to move forward and share my solution with you. And obviously, if you know a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. As you might have figured out, the year 1996 can be divided by 4, so it is a leap year, with additional February 29th being added to this year. A regular year has 365 days. Leap year, by definition, includes February 29th and has a total of 365 plus 1, total of 366 days. There are 52 7-day weeks in a year, plus some extra days, which would drive the difference from January 1st of 1996, which is Monday. We can calculate it by dividing 366 by 7, which equals 52.28 weeks. Let's find the total number of days in 52 full weeks. We can do it by multiplying 52 by 7, which would be equal 364. As you might have figured out, two extra days have been added into the week in 1996, which can be calculated by subtracting 
364 from 366. So the solution would be, since the first day of 1996 was Monday, so the first day in 1997 must be two days after Monday. So the day is Wednesday. It is always good to verify the answer in Microsoft Excel. The day of the week for January 1st, 1996 can be calculated using the weekday formula. For weekday formula, we need to supply the day and then decide in the format. We will choose the first format where the first day of the week is Sunday and the last day of the week is Saturday. The calculations show that the January 1st of 1996 is the second day of the week, which is Monday. Sunday is the first and Monday is the second day. Let's do the same calculation for January 1st of 1997. If I type the value of the day in the cell B3, I can just copy and paste the formula into the cell of C4. And as you can see, the difference is two days and January 1st of 1997 is the fourth day of the week, which is Wednesday. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an opportunity for you to try your skills and solve the challenge. You need to determine the shortest time to cross the bridge. Four people can cross the bridge in different durations. 3, 7, 13 and 17 minutes respectively. Only two people can cross the bridge at the same time. You need to find the shortest time for four people to cross the bridge. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 17 minutes. Choice B, 20 minutes. Choice C, 34 minutes. And choice D, 12 minutes. Can you calculate the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time and if you would like me to validate your solution, please make sure to post it in comments. Thanks for participating and good luck. This particular question was just recently introduced in the test and I would need your help to determine if I answered it correctly. You are presented with the very unusual shape and you need to detect all the triangles that are part of this shape. You have four possible choices. Choice A, 11. Choice B, 13. Choice C, 15 and choice D, 17. Do you see the answer? Consider giving yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 20 seconds, to see if you can count all the triangles. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and show you how many triangles did I discover. Tricky question, don't you think so? But I was very surprised when I counted 15 triangles in this shape. Let me go over and show all of them to you. Here's the first one. Second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, and fifteenth. Do you see any additional ones? Please make sure to post them in the comment section of this video. And if you're getting ready for the assessment test, please make sure to check out the description for the link to the ebook that will help you to get ready. Can I ask you to do me a favor? If you like this content, can you please give this video big thumbs up? This tells us that you need more content like this and we will make sure you will get it in the future. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. Here's an interesting question which tests your knowledge of project management. Team is trying to decide how to complete tasks faster. All tasks take the same time to complete and five team members can complete 10 tasks in 15 days. Currently, team is brainstorming on how to complete the work faster by adding additional team members to the team. How many days will it take for 15 people to complete five tasks on the checklist if each task can only be completed by the person who started it and cannot be delegated. You have four different choices. Choice A, less than one day. Choice B, between one and three days. Choice C, between four and six days. And choice D, more than seven days. 
Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe 10 to 15 seconds, to see if you can calculate it. Ready or not, I am going to move forward and share with you my version of the solution. But as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post your solution in comments. Here's the trick. If five people can complete 10 tasks in 15 days, one person can complete 10 divided by 5, which is 2 tasks in 15 days. Since tasks are the same length, one person can complete one task in 7.5 days, which is calculated as 15 divided by 2, which equals 7.5 days per task. Since tasks are not interchangeable, only 5 people out of 15 will be able to contribute to completion of 5 tasks. And it will take 7.5 days for 5 people to complete 5 tasks, and productivity will not improve by adding more people. So the correct choice here is choice D. It will take more than 7 days to complete these 5 tasks. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Let's look at the question where you need to come up with the logical conclusion. Oxygen is a gas. This tank contains gas. Conclusion that was drawn based on these two statements is that this tank contains oxygen. You need to determine if this conclusion is correct and your choices are choice A true, choice B most likely true, choice C false and choice D cannot determine. Do you see the answer? Question is definitely worded very tricky, but the answer is very obvious. Let's look into details. Obviously, there are many different types of gases. For example, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, and a lot of others. Oxygen is just one of many gases, which is clearly indicated in the statement 1. And tank contains a gas, which could be one of many gases, which is shown in the statement too. Based on this, there is not enough information to determine what type of gas is stored in the tank. So the correct choice here is choice D, cannot determine. Did you come up with the same conclusion? Please share your thoughts in comments. Here is the frequently used question to test how logical are you. You need to determine if conclusion is correct based on the statements. Let's look at the statement. All soccer players are sports persons. And all sports persons are fit. Conclusion. Some soccer players are not fit. And you need to determine if this particular conclusion is correct. You have four different choices to determine if conclusion is accurate. Choice A. It's reasonably correct. Choice B. It is correct choice C, it's incorrect, and choice D cannot be determined based on the information available. Do you think you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video and take another look at the statements and at the question itself. Ready or not, I'm going to move forward and reveal the solution. As you might be well aware, in logical world, there is a formula. If A equals B, and B equals C, then you can reasonably conclude that A equals C as well. We can look at our original statements as A, B and C. For example, the statement all soccer players are sports persons could be an equivalent of A equal B. And then all sports persons are fit could be B equal C. Based on these two statements, we can reasonably say that A equals C, which would mean that all soccer players are fit. Our question though asks us if some soccer players are not fit. Do you think it is correct? Based on the information provided, it is not correct. So the correct choice here is choice C, incorrect. Because the correct answer based on the information we have is all soccer players are fit. Do you have a better way to solve this question? Please make sure to share in comments. And if you're trying to get ready for the test and need additional questions to practice, please make sure to check out additional materials in the description section of this video. Here is one of my favorite questions where you need to determine next number in the sequence. 
you are presented with four rectangles. Each rectangle contains letters. There are four letters in each rectangle. Three rectangles contain letters. And you need to determine the letters in the fourth rectangle. What's interesting is that the upper row of the letters is bold, and the lower row of the letters in the rectangles is the regular font. You need to determine item that comes next in the sequence, and you're presented with the four different choices. Choices A, B, C, and D. Take a close look to see if you can determine the answer. As I mentioned, this is one of my most favorite questions. Let's move forward so I can share the solution with you. To answer this question correctly, you need to know letters of the English alphabet, as well as you need to know a little bit of the math. And my advice to you, always look for patterns, because you would need the pattern to solve this question. So let's first look at the pattern. As you might have guessed, letters of the English alphabet are incremented here by the certain number. Increment number is different for each section of the rectangle. And the decryption key, if you're familiar with encryption and decryption, is 1, 2, 3, and 7. Let's look into details. Let's start with the upper left corner of the rectangle. And look at the existing sequence. You see that the letters are B, C, D, and they match to English alphabet 1 to 1. So the next letter would be E. And it, but if you look at the set of answers, choices A, B, and C all have letter E in the upper left corner. Now let's look at the upper right corner of the rectangles. And then you see that in the main sequence, the letters are I, K, and M. And if you know English alphabet, H, I, J, which is missing K, L, next is M, and O, which means that the increment is 2, which matches the second number in our decryption key. If we look at the answer, we already know that the correct choice here is choice A, because the upper row letters are E and O only in this choice. But the question is done in such a way that you can continue the logic and determine decryption key for the bottom row as well. If you're interested, bottom left corner, we have three number differences in the second row, and the correct choice here would be choice B. And in the bottom right corner, there is a seven number increment, and the correct letter choice here would be choice V. So as I already mentioned, the correct choice here is choice A. Hopefully you've learned something, and now not just know how to answer similar problems on the test but also learned about simple encryption and decryption logic you can use with the letters of the alphabet. Here's the famous four triangle question you regularly observe in the test. You need to calculate the missing number, which is represented by the question mark, and you're presented with four different triangles. Each triangle is of a different color. The first bottom left corner blue triangle has numbers in the corners 2, 2, and 6. The green triangle next to it in the upper right corner has numbers 4, 3, and 1. The purple triangle in the bottom left corner has numbers 3, 5, and 2. And then the last triangle, black triangle, has numbers 0, 1, and then in the upper corner there is a missing number which you need to calculate based on the four different choices. Choice A, 0. Choice B, 1. Choice C, 2. And choice D, 3. Do you see the answer? Let me give you a hint. There is a true calculation and not guessing behind determining what the number is. <laughs> Ready or not, I am going to move forward and reveal the solution to you. As I mentioned, the trick about this problem is that the number can be calculated and the key to calculate it is to determine the pattern. And then the pattern here is that the numbers in the corresponding corners of the triangles all add up to 10. Let's do the math and start with the bottom left corner. 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1 equals 10. 
let's go to the bottom right corner of the triangle. 2 plus 3 plus 5 plus 0 is also 10. And now, in the same way, let's do the math and calculate the missing number. 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus question mark equals 10. Based on these calculations, question mark equals 1. So the correct choice here is choice B, 1. Keep in mind that sometimes, in these types of problems, triangles are colored. And the only reason this is done is to confuse you, to look for the patterns inside the triangles itself. I truly hope that you've nailed this question on your own or learned how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the interesting challenge you might frequently see on the test. You need to determine minimum time for people to cross the bridge. Every person moves at individual speed and four people can cross the bridge in different durations. They can cross it in 3, 7, 13 and 17 minutes respectively. The trick here is that only two people can cross the bridge at the same time. You need to determine what is the minimum time for four people to cross the bridge. You are presented with four different choices. Choice A, 17 minutes. Choice B, 20 minutes. Choice C, 34 minutes. And choice D, 12 minutes. Are you ready for the challenge? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. As you might have determined, certain sequence provides the best efficiency for travelers to cross the bridge. Let's give each traveler the number. Based on the speed, this person can cross the bridge. We will first send number 17 and 7 at the same time to cross the bridge. After 7 minutes, number 7 finished crossing the bridge. And number 17 needs additional 10 minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number 13. After additional 10 minutes, number 17 reaches the finish line. And number 13 needs 3 more minutes to complete the travel. Let's now send number 3. Both number 3 and number 13 reach destination at the same time, after additional 3 minutes and total time it took for travelers to cross the bridge would be 7 plus 10 plus 3 equals 20 minutes. So the correct answer here is choice B, 20 minutes. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is the frequent test problem where you need to determine the age of the family members. Today, a father is three times as old as his son. After 15 years, the father will be twice as old as his son. What is the father's present age? And you have four different choices. Choice A, 40 years. Choice B, 45 years. Choice C, 50 years. And choice D, 55 years. Do you see the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. One of the ways to solve this problem is to take the number from the solution and see if it will work the math. But instead of doing that, we're going to build the expression and calculate the father's present age. In the first step, we're going to introduce two variables. Variable x will represent age of the son today, and variable y will represent father's age today. So our first formula is 3x equals y which indicates that today father is three times older than his son. After 15 years, our expression will be different. The new expression will be y equals 2x plus 15. Because in both cases y is the same, we can build a new expression 3x equals 2x plus 15. Once we simplify, 3x minus 2x will equal 15. And after completing the calculations, x will be equal 15 and y will be equal 45. Based on this, today's age of the son is 15 years old. Which means that after 15 years, son will be 30 years old and father will be 60 years old. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar age problems on the test. 
Here is an interesting problem where you need to count the number of squares in the presented shape. The correct number is one of four different choices. Choice A, 22. Choice B, 10. Choice C, 18. And choice D, 14. Take a close look at the picture to see if you can come up with the right solution. I was really impressed, but there are 18 squares in this picture. Let me show them all to you. 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 and 18 do you see any additional ones it is totally possible that i missed one of the squares and if you do see any additional ones please make sure to post them in comments and now here's the question for you to try your skills you need to determine how many triangles are shown on the screen you have four different choices choice a eight choice b ten choice C 12 and choice D 14. Feel free to pause this video to calculate the right answer and make sure to post your solution in comments so I can give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an interesting question where you need to determine Dice's number at the bottom. Dice was rolled twice and Dice's numbers have been captured in snapshots 1 and 2 with numbers 1 and 6 at the top. The dice was rolled again. You need to determine the number at the dice's bottom if number 5 is currently at the top. You have four different choices. Choice A, 1. Choice B, 2. Choice C, 3. Choice D, 6. Do you see the answer? Please take a close look because the answer may not be obvious. Maybe pause this video to give yourself a little bit of time to find the solution. Are you ready? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, let's take a close look at the DICE's snapshots. Based on both snapshots, we can learn that numbers 4, 1, 3 and 6 are all adjacent to number 2. Because DICE only has 6 sides and corresponding 6 numbers, based on the two snapshots, we can determine that 5 must lie opposite of number 2. This is why if 5 is at the top, then 2 must be at the bottom. Did you figure it out on your own? Please share your thoughts and the way you solve this challenge in the comment section of this video. Would you like to try your own skills now to see how well you can solve the challenge? This is your opportunity to find the next number in the sequence. You are presented with three different numbers, 33, 55, 77, and one number is missing. You have four different choices to select the solution. Choice A, 97, choice B, 99, choice C, 105, and choice D, 107. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can solve this challenge. And once you're ready, make sure to post your answer in comments. This would allow me to give you my feedback. Thanks for participating and good luck. Here is an interesting question where you present it with the set of numbers and you need to determine which number is not a prime number. You have four different choices. Choice A, 31. Choice B, 61. Choice C, 71, and Choice D, 91. Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe recall the definition of prime numbers, and see if you can come up with the solution. Did you solve it? Let's move forward and get to the correct solution together. To solve this challenge, 
let's start with the definition of prime number. Prime numbers cannot be divided by any number other than one and number itself without leaving a remainder. Some examples of prime numbers would be 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and you can continue the chain. The opposite of prime numbers are composite numbers, and examples of those would be 4, could be divided by 2, 6, could be divided by 2 and 3, 8, which could be divided by 2 and 4, 9, 10, and you can continue the sequence. As you might have figured out, out of the numbers presented, 91 can be divisible by 7. So, 91 is not a prime number, which means that the correct solution is choice D, 91. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here's an interesting challenge where you need to determine the relationship between family members. I mean, is Bosca's sister. Catherine is Bosca's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Alan is Dan's mother. You need to determine how Amin is related to Dan. And you have four different choices. Choice A, grandfather. Choice B, grandmother. Choice C, daughter. And choice D, granddaughter. Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can navigate in this puzzle and get to the correct solution. Ready or not, I am going to move forward, reveal the answer to you, and explain how I got to the solution. And as usual, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. The easiest way to determine this multi-generational relationship in the family is to build a diagram. Let's do it one step at a time. I mean, is Baska's sister. Catherine is Baska's mother. Dan is Catherine's father. And Ellen is Dan's mother. Now let's look at the conclusions we can draw from this diagram. I mean, and Baska are Catherine's children. Since Dan is Catherine's father, I mean, and Baska are Dan's grandkids. Which means that I mean is Dan's granddaughter. So the correct choice here is choice D, granddaughter. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to diagram and solve similar problems on the test. Here's a tricky problem that you might find challenging to solve. You're presented with the pyramid. Top of the pyramid starts with the missing number that you need to calculate. If you go down, second row contains numbers 29 and 34. Next row contains numbers 11, 15 and 16. Following row has numbers 4, 5, 8, and 6. And then the last row has numbers 2, 1, 3, 4, and 1. You need to calculate the missing number, which is in the top row. And you have four different choices. Choice A, 59. Choice B, 63. Choice C, 67. And then choice D, 73. Give yourself a little bit of time maybe 10 to 15 seconds, maybe a little bit longer, to see if you can answer this question. Did you solve it? Was it hard for you? Let's move forward and I'll share with you my solution. But obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post it in comments. Tricky problem, don't you think so? But the solution to this challenge is really simple. To calculate it correctly, you need to move from the bottom to the top. And if you look closely at the pyramid, you will notice that the higher row is calculated as the sum of bottom values plus the increment. And increment also increases with each row by one. Let me demonstrate. If we look at the numbers in the bottom left corner of the pyramid, you see numbers 2 and 1. Sum of 2 and 1 is 3. But then we add the value of the increment, which is 1 and the calculated value is 4. Let's continue with the sequence. Next set of numbers is 4 and 5. 4 plus 5 is 9. And then we need to add the value of the increment, which also increased by 1. So now instead of being plus 1, the increment is plus 2. 4 plus 5 plus 2 equals 11. Based on this information, the missing value can be calculated as 29 plus 34 
plus the value of the increment, which would be plus 4, which equals 63 plus 4, which equals to 67. So the correct choice here is choice C, 67. Hopefully you've nailed this question on your own and now know how to answer similar problems in the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.